Michelle Manriquez from Drop That Brush, and we help Narn artists become artists. Please subscribe, like, and ring the bell. Today we're gonna to talk about how to design your own painting. Not just following exactly what the uh, picture says. Pictures are kind of bad and they require some work to make them a nice painting. So last week we talked about line, shape, and direction. Today we're gonna to talk about color and values. One of the ones that I love, again, I love Coney Couches, Sexful for Painting. Uh, I love this book also, The Seven Keys to Grace Paintings, and I know I can't spell her name correctly. It's Jane Hofstetter. It's probably wrong. Anyway, it is um, not published anymore, but you can find it online if you just look. Um, there's used copies all over the place. They really is a wonderful way how she describes values and how you use your values. One your of the first things you want to do is line, direction, shape. Then you look at color. And you basically want warm dominant or cool dominant to your choose. The, the colors you use in your painting will determine what the viewer may feel. So let's split it between warm and cool colors. Let's talk about warm colors. Warm colors are yellow, orange, red, and pink. Yellow makes you feel cheerfulness. It's, um, it's a very vibrant color that kind of gives it a glow. When you see orange, you see so harvest, fall. It could be happiness, warmth. I think that's why I like a lot of my are orange. Red can be an aggressive color. It could mean stop, danger. Sometimes um, you, you have to be careful because red can be a little overwhelming and kind of tiring for the eyes. Cool colors. Cool colors would be things like green, blue, and purple. Green is the most stressful of the colors, very gentle. When you want to keep people calm, they paint the rooms green and there's a reason why. Blue is serene, it could be spirituality, it could be, give you the idea of nobility. Purple, purple's been kind of known for being the, the color for kings. So it's stately, impressive, rich. So, you know, if you use one particular or the other, it can have a different feeling in your paintings. White is, which for watercolor, is simply the white of the paper. And that is pure, luminous. And it's really what allows that white really pops the entire picture into place. If you put the, the dark against the light, white is probably the most important in watercolor because we have to stop, we have to not paint the white. Black, I don't actually use black. I make my blacks because I think they're prettier. Um, but black can give you a more somber mood. It could be um, mysterious. Black could be more warm or more cold and that makes a difference in how whether you're looking for a more warmth feeling into it. And I have some examples later about that. So. What is your favorite color and what's it mean to you? Comment below. The color that you're using may determine what the viewer feels. If it's landscape, very soft rolling hills, well, you do, you do cool colors. If you're gonna be have a busy street where there's a whole bunch of people running around and there will be, you'd wanna use the more warm colors because that implies busyness. The other thing you wanna note is when you are using cool colors, retreat, warm colors come forward. And it really does make a difference. So if you're going to put something behind something else, just bring it down with a little cool color and that will bring that to behind so it's not so we know what's in front what's behind when we're overlapping now most people who 
are buying paintings, they prefer a small area of brightness with mainly a grayed down color throughout the rest of the painting. I kind of do what I want to do because I really just love color. It makes me and happy if there's lots of beautiful, vibrant colors. I am now 15 years into this and now starting to use some grays. It's like, oh, yeah, they're okay, I guess. I am more vibrant than not. And, uh, but that's not, if you're wanting to sell things, you're much more likely to sell with a small, bright color with a little more gray throughout the picture. It's really important that you make a determination, if you can, of warm or cool. So, I'm so for my warm list, come on spring. Now, I was playing pinks and yellows and oranges and I just really wanted to play with it. And then I splashed just a little bit of green, a little bit of blue here and there. It mainly is a warm painting. Pumpkin spice, again, you can see very, very warm painting. Though there are parts of it that are cool. And mom's rose, same thing. I will note that the mom's rose should actually have a little bit of a green on top. I noticed that I've kind of put it, that shape coming down, and I probably should have put a couple of little dabs of green on top because only part of green is just on the bottom. And it should have been just either a couple little splashes or just a little movement of green on top. Here's what I consider my my cool paintings. The hollyhocks, a little pink with a lot of more sedate colors. They're calmer, at least for me. This is probably a more appropriate thing is when you're when you're doing your shapes, you look a small amount of color and mainly a little more grayed out elsewhere. Shadows of Violet is mainly cool, as you can see. I, the only real warms are, I don't know if you notice it, but there's the big, the big warm, which is stamen, the yellow, but then there's two little ones. One's a mama and what's a baby. And it was actually done, designed that way so it moved through the picture and not just be, you know, this one place of yellow, period. So I did move it around a little bit. So I actually made a shape between those yellows. The name is Touche, and this gentleman was, um, he's definitely cool with just a little bit of warmth. And the warmth actually goes from the top through his hand through and through his face. Everything else is pretty cool and it's pretty grayed down. So let's talk ones where I didn't quite make it the half and half. And so you can see the difference because there definitely is a difference. This picture is uh, mainly on the cool side, but it's kind of hard to tell because there's a lot of of pink tones through all the leaves, but the flowers are so vibrant that I feel that that still is mainly a cool tone. Let's talk about Independence Day. This gentleman, boy, I blew this. Neither cool nor warm is dominant. How could I have fixed it? I think would have been better is if I had made the shirt fire engine red, but right now I am mainly, there's no dominance of color. I was playing with the colors. You know, I just love playing with my colors. The, my chroma is very bright. There is no grade down at all. And I like it, but it's probably not the correct way to do it, but you know what? I'm the designer, I can do what I want. So I decided I would make them fun, fun colors. And I went for it. But I realized, again, I chose not have a dominant color scheme. And it is a little confusing to the eye versus the ones that you know that's dominant or warm. Your color is going to make a determination of what kind of painting you're gonna do. 
And I truly believe that you only need a few colors. It makes a huge difference, even though you can see I obviously use a lot more colors. But the ones I use only a few colors, I think actually the painting is much better. So if you have questions, let me know. Answer them, comment below. Why is value important? Number one, let's just determine what value is. Lights and darks, nothing more dramatic than that. But when we wanna turn a corner, one side is gonna be lighter, one is gonna be darker to show that the corner is rolling. Or for a round object, a soft edge that turns us from the light side to the dark side. Basically, that allows us to have form. And this was really hard for me to get this. I think the people who draw, and I truly believe drawing is important. It's just, I was not that good and I'm still working on it. But I've also used a lot of different ways that allow me to kind of get around this. Well, so let's talk about a value finder. Now they have the light colors, the dark colors. Let's talk about why I care. Well, number one, because I like color, the beautiful, most beautiful colors in the mid values are gonna be the most pretty colors. So basically, I like to stay midly and mid values. When I have a focal point though, I try to make that a light versus a dark. Um, and that will pop that focal point out. And you, I design that way. Even if the light isn't as light, I'll make it white just because I want to. So when I'm painting, using a value finder, the first step is white. Then the next are what I call the, the light colors. Then, and there's not a much oomph to them. They're kind of boring. Then you hit the mid colors which is uh, four through seven. And here, then the darks. What is going to be dominant? Mainly dark or light. And the original thing is we're looking at pictures, we should determine that in the beginning rather than um, doing it at the end and try to figure it out later. Um, it will help you in the end. We're gonna talk about color and values at a different time um, because that's a whole bugabaloo by itself. I have played with it for a while, but it is harder and I'm gonna give you some things that can help you if you um, are having problems with showing colors, values. Um, basically, the most obvious thing is get rid of the color. Just get rid of the saturation. There's no color, you'll see what's going on. I wanna talk about size a little bit here. So in values, there should be mainly something, then a little bit of this and just a little bit of that. So a papa, mama, baby. Most paintings will be based upon doing the mid values is mainly the papa. For value patterns, Number one would be medium and then a smaller amount of dark. Would be, number two would be a dark with a light. Um, number three would be medium <laughs> with, which is Papa. Mama could be light with just a little bit of dark to show off the area, but they should be attached together. It shouldn't be like, here is a little piece of dark way over here. No, it should be attached with the white and the medium, so it's a part of it. Um, and then the opposite then would be medium papa, and then dark with just a little bit of white. Those are all options. If when you're looking at pictures and you say something's wrong, I can almost guarantee <laughs> There's two things. You drew something wrong or your values were wrong and you need to adjust the values. And normally it needs to be darker somewhere. Something you can use and, and specifically to do is, as, is to separate the foreground 
the middle ground, and the background. Number one would be the, the foreground is dark, then the house or something is white, and then the rest of it is medium tone. And you could see that foreground, midground, background, we switch the values. So here's an example of where you've changed the values based upon what's in front, what's in the middle, and what's the back. Number three, foreground is mid value. There's a dark mid ground and the background would be white. What would that look remind me of? That reminds me of a sunset. When I'm using values, I try to keep it easier than if you try to use all the values. I'll do either three values or four values and basically make it, you know, light, medium, dark. But I want you to think about the basic plan of the darks and lights. As you're beginning to design, you want to decide what is most important, the light or the dark. Then there should be some connection between normally the darks that sh or sometimes lights where there's connection between. You don't want to have uh, spots of dark, but no connection in between. Always, always, I'm going to encourage you to, to draw. However, they have an amazing program that allows me thumbnails without drawing. And so, yeah, I cheat. It's called Notenizer. Notan basically is black and white. And I'm going to show you, and we're going to do a demonstration so that you understand how it works. I take my picture, whatever the picture I'm going to do, I put it on this and this allows me to decide if that's going to be an okay painting to paint. There are many things out there that you should not paint that are beautiful pictures. So it's kind of a cheater's way to draw, but it allows me to do the same thing. I can do a whole kind of different thumbnails based on that notarizing and it lets me know what's going to work and kind of what it won't. And I'm going to give you some so, examples. I'd like to talk to you about the notarizer. I had an awful time saying this. So let's look at the first photo that I'm going to show you. Again, when you are determining what you're going to paint, the first thing I would suggest you do is you go through here. So now I'm going to go, I get my notarizer. I've done the app, $2, and I go, your choices are take a photo or go to your library. So I'm going to my library. There's the picture. Very nice. Pretty picture. I see that some are going different ways. This one in the middle, dead center in the middle. So that would have to be moved. But these have different shapes. You can see this shape over here and this is different. So, and there's one, two, three, four, five. That's a good amount. We try to do uh, odd number. So now let's no tan it. All right, now let me adjust and see. Okay, I gotta use my finger. It's not awful because number one, if I can pull that and make it look like a flower, that's the main part. If you get something and you think, what is this? Then it probably, when you paint it, it will still be, what is this? Let's look at the shapes. So here's a dark shape and it goes through here and it loops over here and it goes over here and it goes over here. And look, it dumps over here and around. That's a nice shape. I still don't like the first flower is a circle, but it's not awful. That could be doable. So let's look at it with uh, three levels. Now you can adjust this. Now I'm going to look for where's the whites because I do want whites. I want these to be contain. Can you see how it's one big shape and it loops in? But now I'm looking for, is it, can I get any white? So the main flower would have most of the whites. I thought this would be good. I really did. And you know what? I was surprised. I thought, you know what? There's lights. I can see lights in it. And I thought that might work. So I come over here and I go to the no tan and I'm like, okay, I'm going to move it around. That doesn't say anything to me. It doesn't say flower. The shape is not good. So I'm going to flip it this way and it just gets dark in case there's nothing. 
Yeah, if I look at this, I would not say, oh yes, that's a flower. Like the other one, we're able to see it and know that's a flower. So this is a definitely do not paint. Now I want you to see this, this is an interesting. What did they do? We're, again, we're talking, what did they do? They cut it right in the middle. Can you see it? The sky is exactly the same size field of flowers. What else do I notice? There is a million circles. Probably right there I would have been done, but I'll just show you how it looks like in no tan. So, all right, and guess what? Half of it's dark, half of it's light, which means right there is a problem. And I would say that is not a good painting. This is one I painted. It's somebody, one of my students' dogs, and I adore this picture. Now, I painted this basically as a light picture. I want you to look again at the shape. It comes down, it loops over, it comes around, loops around, comes down, goes, it kind of dances through this over and then down it and around and come over here and here and here and loops here. It is the most beautiful shape. I mean, it really is absolutely gorgeous. And pretty much everybody who painted him, him or her, I'm not sure, they did really good on it because it has a beautiful, if you basically can get the values in, even sort of right, it would look beautiful. And so three levels and I'm finding the white because we have to know where the white is. I'll probably make that a little bit and then bring it down. Yeah, like that. And so you can see and adjust it. Then I would print this out. I would actually do my all my first washes before I got into details. I would do it on this. I wouldn't even look at the dog. I might see what a local color or not. I may change my mind and do whatever I want as long as I have that shape. Now, doesn't that look good? I thought that would be pretty nice. I mean, dark, this is light. I thought, that's not bad. You know, there's the yellow thing going here. And I thought, okay, there might be a good picture. <laughs> when I got into the no tan, <laughs> yeah. So I want you to see what it does. When you see spottiness in any kind of a photograph, it probably will never be a good picture. You probably, no matter what you do, when you move this thing around, that says nothing to me. The only thing that's maybe right that little area, everything else is like, what is it? I can get a little bit. And when you see a whole bunch of spottiness, it's not good. It will not make your life happy. So I will not be painting that one. You need to look at your pictures. Even though I will look at them until they go to the no tan, if I can't do it on the don't tan, or if it looks really spotty, it's not something you should paint unless you really are a good artist and you really have ability to understand shapes, design, and change the values a lot. It's not that they can't be painted, but they're hard enough that if you're a beginner, it would be frustrating. And my goal is to make you excited about this. I got a picture and it's pretty good. Not to be, oh my God, this is so hard. I'm never gonna be an artist ever. I figured the easiest way to show you some of this, some of mine, of what I did, good and bad. All right, let's start with the cat. I love this picture. This cat picture, I think it's Lucy, which had a beautiful uh, shadow behind her. My first thought was the minute I saw the picture, it's like I wanted to paint it just because the values were so perfect. Normally you have to muck with things. This thing, you didn't have to do nothing. It did itself. It painted itself, basically. It's one big shape. So I already knew right then that was a good painting based upon the value pattern of mainly dark with some white, which is one of our four main plants. Do I want it to be warm or cool? Normally, when you look at black, you think of it more as cool. But you know, it's a cat and I kind of wanted that feeling like a cat feeling. So actually there's a lot of warmth, dark red. So I looked at the design. I'm basically following the design. Um, if you notice, one of the things I noticed is that the ear, her ear looked weird. So I purposely adjusted that. Again, if you see something that looks weird, fix it. Don't just ignore it. 
And so I actually adjusted his ear to make sure that it was kind of looking like the, the shadow was coming off of that. If you look at this, looking at sizes, and again, about the overall picture, I have a papa shape, black shape, that goes from one side through the face all the way down to the other side. I have a under the cat's chin area, uh, there is a dark baby. And then I actually took the small shape where his hand's sitting on something, that dark shape, and I'm making that a little bit bigger so I would see it. Because actually in the picture, you can see that it's, it can't barely see it. And that also meant I also wound up adjusting the, the, the paw shape just a little bit to make that work. Because I was curious, you know, for doing this, I went ahead and I put my painting back into the notarizer, and this is actually what I came up with. And so I'm very close to the values that I was trying to get. This is a uh, family member's kids. This Now I actually cropped it down along. It was uh, horizontal, um, but of course the focus was the children. So with the children, I don't need a whole bunch of fields. I want the children. So I grabbed the children and made them, I made it into a vertical, whole bunch of horizontal lines. There is the sky is a horizontal. Then there's a small field horizontal. Originally, in the original picture, the sky was as big as the field. And so I cropped out the sky to bring it down. The next thing I noticed is that this cute little family, it's all blue green, so it's all cool. There is not anything to pop it to make it exciting. If you look at the hat, the bat, and the and the field, they are totally one shape. And I didn't really like that. Basically, we're looking at number three, which would be the foreground is actually is mid-value. The grass is the dark and the sky is the white. And that's my, that's, that's the setup of this particular painting. So I took, I gave him a red cap, which what's a compliment is green. So that will make it pop out the people. The little baby has a red jumpsuit, but now I went back yesterday and I pulled out and put it back on and sure enough if you can believe this even though it looks to me like the sky I'm just you know looking at it it looks like the sky is dark it looks to me like fields are um, uh, lighter but in reality when it's pulled notarizer I noticed that that doggone black bat and his glass are still attached together and they're still um, the same value. I thought I'd fixed it. I didn't, but change the color. I don't think it's as obvious, but it was interesting. Even if I had, I should have made that a very light red rather than a, um, which would have been more pop to it, but you know, live and learn. I, but I thought this was very fascinating. See, I thought I did one thing and when I actually looked at it, no, it's totally different. It's much more similar to the picture, the original picture. And maybe I should have had a little more mid-tones in the grass. Saw this beautiful girl. She was, I grabbed her and said, can I take pictures? Don't do anything, just ignore me. I took her pictures. Um, that's craft woman. So I went and looked at the picture using the Notalite, Not Noden. Iser. Oh my God, I'm not going to be able to say this. The Noton. I looked at what's the light and dark. And it's kind of very obviously, what is it currently? You're looking at a dark picture, period. I chose to make it a light picture. I was an option. That gave me the opportunity to see, here's what I have. Is that what I want? And I'm going to, and I choose to do something different. First off, I don't, because I don't know them. This is why I love paint, but I don't know. I can do whatever I want. So I decided, wouldn't it be nice if she has red, 
brown hair, because right now it looks very dark. Um, and she could have been a little red. I say she has red hair with green eyes. I don't know. I, I make things up in my head as I'm doing this. So then, if I've got a girl with uh, red hair, I think that skirt needs to be green. And that would give it a good contrast between the red hair versus the skirt. One of the things that I loved immediately was the fact that that there was a soft edge between her shirt and the back of her seat. And that was an immediately, you saw it, it was there, make that a soft line, just by looking at this. When I went back to the notarizer, it now basically is mainly a light picture, but there is connection between the dark. So the, the bottom of her skirt, goes through, it loops into the shape of her, underneath her neck, into her hair. And there's connection all the way between. That's one big shape. So this is a good way to look at value and say, do I like that or is not what I'm gonna to wanna to do, what I wanna to say to that. Does that, to me, soft, gentle, graceful. And in my head, that's what I was thinking. How do I make that? How do I make her more interesting? Because I know it's not a great, you know, exciting picture, but it was to me. I thought, oh, it's so beautiful. What a beautiful shape. I want that to be the focus. And so again, to make it more interesting, I, I used contrast. No, we did dominant on lights. And I'm sitting here looking at this, a cool painting. I didn't realize it, but I guess it's just a cool painting with a little warmth. Pumpkin spice. Um, again, this is the original picture. You notice on the original picture that there was no curve, and I don't, I don't understand. But somehow the the how the way that shine it suddenly looked like it was straight, and you could see up top it was definitely curved. So I fixed that. That's the first thing I did, and I could see as I put that on no tan. I was able to look and see that that beautiful shapes. I thought, oh, cool, I can do that. Then I did mainly a warm painting with a little blue, a little cool. And then over here, I went and I went, ran it through the nitrizer on my painting. And I can see this value is a dark painting. It doesn't look like it. When I look at that, I don't think so. But when I look at it at the base, that's why this is so helpful. This gives you the opportunity to really understand what you did. You, so I really suggest that you take some of your pictures, put it into this uh, program, and see what happened. Good, bad, or ugly, at least you have an so, idea. When you're not sure what you're doing and just stroking that brush, because hopefully it'll make it better, Drop that brush. I have a Facebook link and I would encourage you to come on in and talk to us and talk about what you've been working on. So drop that brush, Facebook, and the link will be right below. Next week, finish up the elements design and then we're gonna to go to the principles of design. I've already kind of brought them up multiple times, but I'll bring it up again and we'll finish going through this. I really feel that this will make you a much more successful painter. The more you know information about what to make, why we do this to make it interesting, the quicker you'll be successful. You have a great day. Bye.